Okay, so we've had the sort of theoretical gamification. We now have Anwar from Himex, who's going to tell us, give an example of a real-world example of how gamification can be applied to insurance. Thank you. I'll try not to press the mic when I'm pressing the clicker. So I've, um, I'm working for a company called Hymex. Um, we're basically based out of the US. Uh, fundamentally, everything started in London, just not far from here around Shoreditch. And the primary objective of what we try to do is really trying to combine insurance world and the games world together and try to make things more interesting, more fun, and more entertaining. So that's really what we're trying to do. And I'm primarily focusing at the moment on the car um, industry at the moment, the vehicle insurance. So I'll probably regurgitate some of the things we already discussed in the in the, in the breakout sessions so you guys can get a sense of where we are thinking and then try to focus a bit more on the specific examples of automotive insurance and how we are trying to approach things and, and what we are doing as a company to try to change some of the behavior of the industry. I mean, insurance industry, for, for guys who work in the insurance in industry will know that it's slightly different to the entertainment industry, where if you're producing a game, you have a different objective. If you're an insurance company, you have different objective altogether. So our challenge is to trying to bring the games world and the insurance world together and have a happy, fun, you know, playful, <laughs> playful product development. I mean, the definition of a uh, Gamification has is, is been around for quite a long time, uh, but fundamentally what you're trying to do is you know, kind of bring the game mechanics um, in, in trying to achieve business objectives through rewards and through um, uh, in a non-game setting environment. So some of these examples you would probably see in people who do a lot of traveling. Air Miles is, an, is a form of games, uh, gamification, you know, kind of socializing and communicating based on achieving a reward is another form. It's been around for a long time, but I think more recently it's been applied in a bit more uh, scientific way in trying to solve main, main business problems. Some of the criterias or, or fundamentals, so you, you've got contests, um, again, creating missions and rewards, and, um, and trying to reward, again, if you focus around Vehicle insurance is around rewarding the drivers and making sure that the drivers are motivated to drive safely. Um, creating games, again, in a lot of uh, consumers like to play games. So producing games, again, tying it to the product that you're selling or the behavior you're <coughs> trying to change. Uh, leaderboard is another me mechanics uh, that we've implemented in our platform, which allows you to create you know, some of the examples we discussed already. And the other important thing is when you're building a, a gamification platform or a game is to kind of focus on the, um, you know, to stop people gaming the game is effectively. So if you're going to reward somebody for telling you how many times they've gone to, you know, Starbucks, then that person will probably try and find ways to fix that system so they can get more free coffee or something. So again, you know, you've got to put all of these elements uh, into the platform. Achievements, so this is another way of constant, constantly reinforcing and, and, and motivating them to engage with the application, the platform, or the solution you've created. And then alerts, which is tied to engagement, and uh, rewards and points, which are fairly obvious, but again, trying to target a specific behavior and reward them based on that. So if you were to break this down and say, well, you know, first of all, you've got to define your business problem. What is it that you're trying to do? So in our world, we are trying to encourage people to become more safer drivers. So that's the problem we're trying to solve. And the way we would identify that is, is to basically identify the consumers, or in our world, we talk about the players. Uh, so the consumers in this case could be somebody who's just passed their driving test and they're learning to, they're hitting the road, somebody who's been driving for a long period of time uh, maybe they live in different parts of the country, city drivers, urban. Somebody who drives a lot, so these could be your delivery guys or your, you know, the traveling salesmen, um, you know, families or, again, singles um, who, are, who are married. And then you've got to decide on the motivation. And once you've done that, you've got to basically align it with the rewards and then 
quite simply, you apply the mechanics. So no different to the exercise we've gone through, but you kind of try and apply all these different rules and, these, and you measure if this behavior has been achieved. And what you really do in real life is that you do this continuously. So we basically monitor how people are using the technology and the application, how they're using the data, and constantly <coughs> tweak all of these parameters. The reality with all of these things is that there isn't a silver, th there isn't a formula that works for everything. So you've got to have a basic idea, apply that, and constantly monitor the behavior and then constantly change. And that's no different to creating AAA games or uh, simple games like, you know, Angry Bird or whatever. It's a continuous feedback loop which you have to monitor. So, again, going to a real world example, um, we basically created a platform, and I think a lot of people have mentioned in your um, workshops about creating this platform. And our platform is really is designed to increase retention and improve the consumer experience. So this platform we've created allows us to create games, do the social elements, and create communities. And I'll give you some real world examples of what these could look like. So one of the big challenge we have at the moment is that once somebody takes a trip with a vehicle and they provide the data, is how do you basically get that person to review that trip in order for them to change their behavior? So if somebody um, you know, speeds a lot or if they brake a lot, we take that data and we turn that into effectively a game. So a bit like a temple run if you visualize that. And trying to encourage them to play that game so they start to learn you know, why certain things happen at certain times. So if you tell somebody that, did you know that you frequently go over 80 miles an hour in these junctions, they'll be like, I'm not a dangerous driver, but then they subconsciously start to think, well, next time I'm there, I'll try not to accelerate too hard or brake too fast. So again, the platform allows us to create games. And once you've you know, played these games or once you've interacted with this application, you've got to basically reward this person. So again, leaderboard is something we mentioned a lot. Um, creating driver scores. I think, Vanessa, you mentioned you've got a Viva application which gives you a driving score after driving for some certain number of miles. And again, adding other metrics within the games to motivate people to engage. So again, if there's a, a sharing point, so the more you share, the more points you get. So you, you really need to find metrics that works um, for, um, for the achieving the business objectives. Again, this is very tricky. So if you take um, a sales force, their objective is to try and to encourage more sales. So they will create metrics, which is around how many deals are you closing, how many sales leads you've got. So all of these are related to, again, the fundamental question is what is it that you're trying to achieve? Again, bringing in the social elements, uh, one, of the, uh, one of the features that we've added is the ability for the users to you know, share what they're doing in real life, not just drivers. So somebody who's not driving can still interact with the application. And they can do that through you know, social media. And again, the platform was designed with the intention of creating a game, but ultimately the application is applied for is, is the vehicle insurance industry. So allowing somebody to have a very really rich consumer engagement, but at the same time achieve the business objectives that the insurance companies have. Like I said, it's, it's quite a challenging mix of industries to come together, but I think slowly with the likes of Apple and Google and, and driverless cars and um, Lyft and Uber, all of these technologies are coming into this space. I think a lot of these stuff is starting to become reality, at least from what I can see. So I can show you a quick demonstration of this application running, and maybe you guys can give me some feedback or if you've got any further comments. As I was saying earlier, the fundamental thing um, that seems to be key is you have to create a platform or an environment where you can basically allow all of these different um, games or gamification uh, applications or you know, capabilities to be created. So we basically um, invest a lot of money in, in taking real world data and translating all of that into a virtual world. So we take in road network, building information, and what we've done is basically we created a virtual, virtual world ourselves. So what you get 
is basically precise information and we deliberately built this platform so it looks a bit quirky and it looks a bit like game f as well so the trees are not perfectly you know drawn as a tree but they're kind of drawn in such a way that they look like you're in a kind of a a a, a game once we've created that platform we basically allowed that platform to bring data in from the outside world so in this particular example i can basically record my trip so as i'm driving i can use the application to record my trip and once i've done that i can basically interact with that data through a dashboard now because the platform allows you to place vehicles in the world any trip that i've taken i can basically show the user the route in the map and that particular user can basically navigate to that trip and they can replay that and see how they're driving. Now, so you can start to visualize the kind of capabilities and the possibilities you can do. What we're not trying to do is obviously create a Grand Theft Auto game for the insurance world because that's just not going to work. I mean, Grand Theft Auto is designed for stealing and breaking cars, but the <laughs> But the, plat the platform fundamentally is designed to do that if you visualize you know, the technology behind it. So if you're an insurance company and one of the objectives is to reward people based on the amount of driving they do, how well they drive, if they're good drivers, if they're bad drivers, then we want to try and translate these into games and then allow the persons to consume that content. But rather than just show a list of trips, we want them to consume this data in a very visual way so they can have a bit of fun with it. And this particular example, it's got the usual, you know, you've got your profile, information about your vehicle. And again, rather than just tell you what vehicle I've got, one of the elements that we've created is the ability for you to go around customizing a vehicle. And if you visualize how this can be expanded, so you can, at the moment we've got four models, but these can be, um, you know, you can create your own models and add it to the world. You can basically have the insurance companies doing affiliate deals with, and maybe BMWs, Mercedes, or some new electric vehicle they're trying to promote. And again, encouraging the users to have, you know, kind of touch and feel the application and, and start to enjoy it. Similar to what you would do if you're playing a Wii game, if you're playing a racing games, or if you're playing a fighting game on a computer, is to really allow the person to have a sense of, um, you know, kind of achievements and, and belongingness. And this is also created so that you can start rewarding people to unlock new vehicles, new attachments to the vehicle. And then once they've done that, they save it and they basically can share that through social media, through emails and other, other means. The great thing with the platform is because we control every single aspect of it, the change I've just made, my vehicle, if I can see it in the world, will basically reflect those changes. It's quite hard to do this one-handed. So you can probably just make out <laughs> underneath that gray dot is my gray, gray looking SUV. And that vehicle is your avatar, and that's what you've created, and it basically sticks with you for anything you do in the world. If you're not somebody who owns a vehicle and who's, you know, driving, you know, hundreds of miles every day, we wanted to basically again allow additional data. So it looks like there's no traffic around this area, which is unusual. Let me go to a US city where there's lots of traffic, so I know of New York. Now what you'll notice is that the way the map is being populated is that we don't actually run the full application on the device itself. All of the content is basically hosted on a cloud. So all the road network, the building data, all the terrains. So as you move around, it all gets pulled down. And the, then the beauty of this is that you can have a really thin client and you can live in you know, Surrey, you can live in um, you know, Toronto, you can live in New York, or you can live somewhere downtown in Wisconsin. Everybody can have very similar experience and their surrounding will be reflective inside the virtual world. And because we can bring in external data, and I hope this is gonna work, we can visualize a lot of this information inside the virtual world in such a way that we can show you obviously there's a road work here but you can extend this a little bit and say well actually you can visually show some road work happening so it's almost like an animated 
activity inside the world. So what we're really combining is, you know, you, you take the kind of activities you can do in Farmville and, uh, and Grand Theft Auto, but again, we're providing large volume of data, but in a very visual rich way. Yeah. Similar thing for, as they say in the US, gas prices. Um, so these are real-time data fields which are coming from an external source and they're getting populated in the world. Similar thing for weather. And we can actually control the effects inside the world. So this is weather at night time. So you can actually see the level of details. Again, it's about the consumer experience and giving the consumer the feeling they kind of belong in this environment rather than just say it's going to rain show them rain rather than say it's going to rain at night time show them rain at night time if it's going to snow unfortunately there's no snow or rain in new york so i can't show you those effects but you know you get the idea of the kind of effects we can do now if i jump back to london maybe there is going to be some rain it usually does there you go so again rather than just say it's going to rain we want to really immerse the user in, in a world where they basically, they're interested in getting more information about their surrounding. And very similar to, again, rather than type the word search and, 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 and a category, we can predefine these categories and we can basically populate it inside the world. All of this data is coming from third party providers. So we can integrate a list of you know vehicle repair shops we can integrate a list of sainsbury's if we wanted to you know petrol stations so again taking large volume of data and bringing it all into the platform and then creating a user interface which allows a user to very easily navigate navigate to the information they're interested in so this is how we are trying to address the um the automotive insurance industry where they're trying to create uses based insurance products so the more you drive how you drive they basically provide you with discounts and we provide a black box which sits in your vehicle but also the mobile app can uh, sorry the mobile device can also be used as a means for collecting the data itself which can be used for calculating risk and which can be used for obviously providing reward as I said, our main intention was to create a platform and then once you've created the platform, as you do a lot of these workshops and you have conversations with insurance companies, the ideas will start to come together naturally. And it's all about kind of having fun with the data that's all been generated. Just to give you kind of an idea, we are collecting, you know, 20 to 30 meg of data every minute. So the more vehicle you have, the more drivers you have, the amount of data you collect is just kind of mind blowing. And you layer that on top of social media data, point of interest data, traffic data, weather data, air pollution data, you know, people in the room data. Suddenly everything is just large data. How do you visualize all of that data? You need to have a platform that's going to be interesting and engaging. So that's basically what we've got today. And there's uh, hopefully more to come in the future with some of these mini games. And well, thank you for that. Let's see if there's any questions. Hi, um, that's fascinating. And first of all, how, how much coverage do you have? And secondly, have you got a live application available now? Um, we've got coverage, which basically we built the map for the whole of Canada, the whole of USA, whole of the UK, and we've done parts of France. Um, so the way we build uh, the world is basically once we have a customer or once you have a need to build it, it's really just pumping a lot of geometric uh, geographical data into the rend uh, procedural engine and that just basically churns out the world for you. And the second question was live application. There are some live applications out there. Uh, uh, there are, there's an application called Recce, which is a basically a travel application. Uh, and because we are not a B2C brand, we expect these applications to be branded by the insurance companies themselves. Um, we are basically in the process of launching a couple of insurance branded applications in the US and in the UK we will do basically an, an application for the RAC as well. Yeah. Um, my question was, so this is the, the platform then and the gamifications are still to come, is that right? So 
the way to vis the way we've gone about it is that we had to build the platform, the technology first of all, and the gamification is really you've got to define what is the problem you're trying to solve, and then you basically build the gamifications application effectively on top. So if the objective here is to try and to change somebody's driving behavior to make them a bit more safe, then you've got to build the application which allows them to see how they're driving, provide them regular feedback on how they're driving, some tips and, and some additional safety information, and then gradually monitor how their driving behavior changes, and then you kind of gamify each of these elements. There isn't a single you know, formula for gamification because you've really got to define what the problem you're trying to solve. Mm -hmm. But the platform allows you to have the ability to do, you know, the leaderboard, the social media, you know, kind of allow content to be created, content to be shared. So the key components have been built in. Now it's just kind of applying it to the problem. Mm. And the, the graphics that you've created so far, can they mold as roads change and as the map changes? So these are based on real world data. So if the road network changes, then it will automatically get updated. And because the map sorry, the world actually effectively lives in the cloud. When you open the application, if there is a new section of the world that's changed, so let's say the road network in London changes, a bit like the other mapping application, it streams the content directly to your device. So it's not preloaded to the device. The thin client just pulls the data down. Cool. Yeah. So just one final thing. Go for it. Um, so, so when a, a, cu a customer plays this, mm -hmm. um, when do you imagine they would play it? What sort of... What's the interface with it? Do you think that they would play it as they go along and it tracks things and then they look at it later? Or how do you imagine it to work? So there's two parts. So one is, one part of the application we created is about information before you travel. So you may be interested in looking at the weather, the traffic conditions. You may be interested in you know, finding out uh, what is the current petrol price like in your area. So these would be kind of a pre-journey. Whilst you've taken a journey, um, you know, obviously we don't want anybody interacting with it for health and safety reason, but it could easily be used as a means of, you know, finding out where you're going. But though it's not designed to be a navigation application, I think that market's saturated anyway. The engagement will come also once you've taken a trip. You may be interested in, uh, you know, the insurance company may push a message to you, say, you know, here's a driving tip on how to, you know, maybe drive around, you know, slow corners or fast corners. Or you've, you know, you've been speeding regularly, so if you're in the motorway and you're doing 80, 90 miles an hour on a regular basis, then the insurance company may provide you with some tips to say, these are the sections of the road, you tend to speed a lot, and here's examples of your trip, so you can replay that in the world, so you can remember what you've done, and then give you some guidance on how to change that behavior slowly. Okay. Yeah. Thank so you typically would not do it during driving, but really kind of before and after. Yeah. Thank you very much, Anmar. Excellent presentation. Thank you very much.